my name is Wayne. I'm an addict, and this is Inside Addiction. Uh, I grew up in the Bronx, New York, also Queens, New York. Uh, back and forth, my mother, she moved back and forth, uh, moving back with her with her parents when times got rough. Uh, I'm the oldest of three of us. Um, the younger sister, the younger brother. Uh, I go. I my growing up, my life was. It was. It's. It started off pretty okay overall. Um, my father left when I was young, but he was always in my life. Uh, wind up getting a stepfather that was really abusive, but even in that, it wasn't really too too bad, you know. Uh, uh, always drugs and alcohol around around my around my household uh although I didn't start using right away uh my first my first thing that I did I started stealing at the age of 5 I would go in my mother's pocketbook steal her money uh in my classroom I always had to sit in the front of the classroom cuz I was kind of didn't pay attention and uh when my teacher would go to the back of the classroom, I would go in a pocketbook and steal her wallet, uh, go in the bathroom and try to take, you know, take her money out. Uh, and uh, I remember the kids in the class snitching on me and the teacher coming in the bathroom and catching me inside the wallet, um, stealing people's candy monies, kicking teachers, you know, uh, and, and the... And looking back in hindsight, I I started to I I, I learned that uh, a lot of my behaviors just uh, uh, exacerbated the use of my addiction. It just it just uh, made it much easier for me to start. And I think I probably I probably took my first drink probably around eight or nine years old, going to visit my dad a, a little middle of nip, and taking sips off it of, off of that. My first experience with. Uh, with uh, harder drugs was uh, marijuana at the age of 11. I remember uh, being in the Bronx, hanging out with guys, probably they were like 14 or 15. And I remember going, I remember my first experience, uh, Selwyn Avenue in the Bronx, um, going upstairs to one of my neighbor's house. I think it was on his birthday. And I smoked some marijuana and ate some cookies and passed out. and. From that point on, I used every day, um, except for a couple of stints when I was in jail, or uh, I think that probably was the only time where I didn't use uh, when I wasn't when I, when I was in jail or something like that. And even when I was in jail a few times, I I, I uh, participated in getting high. I think I smoked marijuana probably uh, exclusively. For the like from 11 to like probably 13 and that's when I started sniffing coke uh, I went to Catholic school I played basketball uh, I was an athlete uh, um, I grew up in in that Catholic school was a lot of uh, Colombians and that was like in the 80s and and they had like a lot of connections with cocaine so they would come in the classroom they would give us Coke for ten dollars. At thirteen years old. At thirteen years old, yes. In a Catholic school. In a Catholic school, and that, and in <clears> hindsight, <throat> also like now that I have children, I think that you know it really starts at home because mm. even in even in Catholic school, you know we, I I I look back on it and I said the kids in Catholic school had more money to get drugs than the kids in public school. That's just how I saw it because you know. Um, we would be in the classroom, they would have the little bottles and we would just do it right in the classroom. The teacher, you know, wouldn't know. We'd be sniffing right in the classroom, you know, so I did that all through high school. But I was a pretty decent student, pretty decent athlete, had uh, uh, scholarships to go play ball in college, you know. Uh, <clears throat> always told myself that I wouldn't need to sell drugs or whatever because I, I felt like that wasn't something that I really needed to do. I think when I when I turned probably like 14 or 15, uh, my mother and father started smoking crack at that time. So I think... Uh, 
Well, I, well, actually, I, I I was just always reckless. Nine at nine years old, I would like not come home from school on Friday and just come back home on Sunday, you know. And like my my uh my my mother was really passive, so I would come back on Sunday, like so what, you know what I mean, and just go back to school. I never really got any discipline, you know what I mean. Where would you be for got, two days at that age? At a friend's house. You know what I mean? Friend's house that might I might have thought that was more comfortable or something like that. So um, we didn't have like a lot of the the the, uh, the fixings. You know, you know I I I, I didn't, probably didn't have a TV in my room and stuff like that. My friends they would have TVs and radios in their room, so I thought it was more comfortable. Like I said, like you know at that I think around probably thirteen or fourteen. That's when my mother started smoking crack. So it kind of you know. It went, it went really sour from then, cause even I, I and and my addiction took off at the same point, at the same point. So, I remember living in houses with no heat and no lights, and all of us just sleeping on the on the in the floor in the living room, trying to you know keep warm and stuff like that. So, that's I I, I remember, you know that happening more often, you know and the. Uh, uh, <clears throat> And the house that I lived in turned into a crack house because if you got somebody that smokes crack in your house, that's a crack house. You know what I mean? They're not going to say, oh, I'm not going to smoke here. You know, so a lot of people came looking for my mom and and and, and uh, uh, using my my little brother's father had left. The one that was abusive, he had left for like uh, probably probably like seven or eight years and he came back and he had no legs and he was strung out on, on crack, you know, so... Uh, uh, the house really, you know, was really uh, infested, infested. And at this point, I was still going to high school. I was still playing ball and had scholarships to go play ball in college. Uh, and and the addiction took off to where when I graduated, because I wound up graduating from high school, walking the stage, getting my diploma. But the, the, the addiction had took me off so much that I didn't. I didn't even want to go to school anymore, and I wind up getting a job in the World Trade Center, and uh, uh, I was working in the mailroom there, you know, and I was doing pretty good. I used to always see the guys that used to be hustling, but I was doing pretty good at, at my job, you know, and I and I always said, oh, I ain't going to get involved in that. I ain't going to get involved in that, but I was always cool with them. They'd be like, yo, what's up? They'd see me going to work and stuff like that, and I think that probably lasted for like maybe probably like six months to a year after I got after I got out of um, high school. And then when I, I had lost my job through use, I don't even remember the exact reason, but it, that's what it had to be. It had to be through my use. I don't know the specific, you know, specifics behind it, but to my use, I lost the job. And those guys that was always cool with me, they, I, they just let me, you know, just Took, you know, me stuck, took me under their wing and just started letting me, you know, rock with them. I lived in the crack house, so it was easy to sell, you know, sell sell my crack, you know. And the, the my my thought process was always like banged up, so you know, I even sold crack to my mom's. You know, what I mean, that was like part of my story, like how I got it. and she come with four dollars and it cost five dollars. You couldn't get it. You know, what I mean, no shorts, no nothing. Uh, it was it was uh uh periods of time like I have I have you know a bunch of drugs in the house if I'm in the street selling them her and her boyfriends would rob me you know stuff like that we would get into arguments you know and I remember after 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 like selling for like maybe like and this was back in the 80s so it was like you know like popping off so it was like this big drug dealer just like took me under his wing and we used to always drive around I remember he had like a white Volvo uh uh red leather seats and the telephones in his car. He always used to let me hang out with him. And it was like four or 